Welcome to Ray's Garage. I'm Ray Cornelia. This is part two of the Harbor Freight Blast Cabinet Series. As I mentioned in part 1.2, the Tacoma Company will be providing all the upgrades to this blast cabinet build. Over the past couple weeks, Mike Tacoma and I have had several conversations. He's trying to help me understand the theory behind how and why we're doing these upgrades and the mechanics of a blast cabinet and how it works internally. So needless to say, I've learned a lot and I'm really happy I took this route. My problem is, how am I going to relay all this to you? So I thought about that. I'm going to share the upgrade items after some of these parts of the cabinet are assembled. I'm going to assemble the box. If we go back to part one, you're going to remember we were going to start with the hopper. Okay, I was incorrect. I need to walk back a couple things that I discussed about that hopper as well. I might as well mention them now. Mike said it is okay to use a silicone based product on the joints inside the seams. It will not contaminate any paint or meat blast media once it's cured. The only exposed compound or caulk is the polyurethane. So we're going to assemble the top box today and we're going to seal it with this. This is high temperature Permatex RTV gasket maker. Now, you don't have to use the high temperature. The reason I'm using the high temperature is because it's red. You can use the other flavors that are not high temperature. It'll work and do the same exact thing. The other very first upgrade we're gonna use are some of the Tacoma Company's fasteners. And I'll bring you in close and show you the, these things up close and. And I'll tell you what, they're pretty cool, man. And I'll explain how and why we're using them and where we're using them. I'm also going to stop and explain certain things when it's necessary. I'm not just going to rush right through this assembly. So there's going to be a little more jibber jabber. Um, and it's very important that I stop and explain certain things. Uh, that way you'll get a good understanding of it when you go to do yours. One major benefit to the Tacoma Company's upgrades are, they will all fit cabinets that are already assembled. You will not have to disassemble your cabinet to do most of these upgrades. So Mike and I thought it was a good idea to assemble portions of it and explain how the upgrades are incorporated into the cabinet. So without further ado, let's get going, man, and forge ahead on this build. We are going to start box assembly with the rear panel flat on the workbench. Uh, before I get started, I want to mention we're only going to use a tiny bead on the seams with the RTV. And I wanted to show you the screw kit from Tacoma Company. I'm going to bring you in real tight on this one because these things are pretty trick. And I'm going to explain to you why Mike designed them the way he did and how they work. This is a quarter 20 thread a little under 3 eighths long with a flat head. It almost looks like a rivet. Now these heads are going to go on the outside and the nuts are going to go on the inside. The nuts we're currently using are a square head nut and the reason is because it has a completely flat inner face which is going to be going against the very thin metal of the inside of the cabinet. The reason Mike went with this square head is the only nut out there he can find that has a truly flat, non-serrated, without a taper nut. Very important to support that thin metal. Here's the fastener with the nut on it. Again, the heads are gonna be on the outside. So once it's assembled, it's gonna have a real sleek aerodynamic look. We're going to assemble the back the two sides, the top and the front panels. Now, if you remember back in part one, you're going to remove all of the foam tape that Harbor Freight installs on these uh, seams. You're gonna remove the tape, get rid of all the goobers, and clean it with alcohol. Get a nice clean surface for the RTV to stick. One of the main reasons why we're removing the foam tape is, remember I said how thin this material was? Well, when you put a fastener through this and tighten it up, you're gonna deform this edge, creating an air gap, which will create a leak. This is the left side panel. We're gonna put a very small bead of the RTV on the inside edge of this.
Okay, I have to stop and mention something here. The right side panel, this one, is where your blast cabinet door goes. Now, if you notice, this has the quarter inch holes in it right here, and this has smaller holes in it. So to use the Tacoma Company fastener kit, we're gonna have to ream these holes out to quarter inch to fit up with these quarter inch holes. You're probably wondering how I'm gonna tighten these. Pretty simple. All you have to do is put a little pressure on the head, on the outside, and turn this with your 7 16 wrench, and it'll tighten right up. So these are all finger tight right now. I went around, when I threaded the nut onto the fastener, I just did a finger tight till it touched. I wiped out all of the excess RTV, if there was any, I had very small beads as you saw. So I wiped up anything that spewed out. And now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna tighten all the fasteners. Now I wanna point something out here. These fasteners, when you tighten it, you want the pointy side up. That way when the material, when the material is blowing around the cabinet, it can't sit on a ledge right here. So all points facing up. I have all the fasteners tight with all the points facing up. And I wanted to mention, you can also use a 12 point half inch socket for these as well, or a 7 16 open end wrench. Now that we have the cabinet assembled and the fastener snugged up, this is the rear panel. This would be the right side of the cabinet if you were standing at the front of the cabinet. And this port here is what Harbor Freight calls their fresh air intake port. Tacoma Company calls it their vacuum port. Harbor Freight has it wrong. If you were to use this as a fresh air intake port and set the vacuum where they tell you to on the uh, left side of the cabinet, you would suck all your media out. And whoever has it set up that way and you're wondering why your media is ending up in your vacuum, this is one main reason why. I'll explain more in detail once we have all the upgrades installed. So the ne next upgrade is this vacuum port wastegate. We're going to be installing this right here. So we're going to put a little RTV on here. We're going to attach it with the included self-tapping quarter 20 screws. Let's get started. I just did some quick math and this thing lines up about two inches from the top, that centers it over the hole. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have it centered pretty well. Since they're quarter 20 self-tapping screws, I'm gonna use a number seven drill bit.
Okay, we got our four holes drilled. We got our RTV on here. Okay, our vacuum port wastegate is installed. This is where our vacuum hose connects, right here. Now with the vacuum wastegate installed on the rear panel, this is the left side of the cabinet, and this is now gonna become the fresh air intake. Now this fresh air intake is just wide open on the inside of the cabinet. So the Tacoma company has come up with this part called the baffle box. Top is closed, bottom is open. Now this box is gonna go on a 45 degree angle and cover up this port on the inside of the cabinet. So we can line this up, set it at a 45 degree angle, and it's basically gonna point down towards the front bottom left inside the cabinet. It's got supplied hardware, so we're gonna mark these holes and we're gonna install this on the inside. I'm gonna install this, then I'm gonna remove it, and I'm gonna primer it and paint it to match the red. I'm gonna use a mag tab to help hold this. And we're gonna just cover this hole with the closed end of the baffle box. Okay, I got it thrown up here with two mag tabs, a jumbo and a regular. I got the hole covered, so the hole's about here. I'm gonna use the angle finder. Let me zero it out here, get zero. So we're gonna go 45 degrees. Let's go for perfection. Let's mark some holes. Okay, the included hardware are 1032. Uh, screws and lock nuts. So we'll drill a 1364 hole. We'll go ahead and install it on the inside now. Here's a better shot of the inside of the cabinet with the baffle box installed. We got the close end up here, opened end, pointing down and it's set at 45 degrees. The baffle box is five inches wide, 10 inches tall, and it stands an inch and a half off. I'm going to install this latch real quick so this door's not flopping in the wind. We have one more modification for part two. Here's the part. It's called a box top. This is the box that is around the vacuum port. It is open in the top and it's open in the bottom. You want to close off this top because we don't want blast media getting down into the vacuum on the top of this. We do not want media up here. We want the dust going up through here in the bottom, not through the top. So that way if there's any blast media, it's gonna drop down because it's heavier than the dust. So what the box topper does is basically closes off the top of that box. I'll install it, show it to you installed, and I'm gonna remove it and primer and paint it and then reinstall it at a later time. Basically, it just slips in right here. I'm pushing up that top because it's the top and the rubber that holds this thing in place. There's the box top installed. Some of your other options are, instead of installing this, I'm sure some of you have seen in other videos where people have cut this right here and folded it down and folded the edges over. Yes, it'll work, but it's not as efficient as the box top. The whole idea here is to get your dust sucked up in the bottom of this box and not through the top. You do not want media collecting on the top of there either. So it serves two purposes. As a recap, we assembled the cabinet with a Tacoma hardware kit. We installed the wastegate elbow for the vacuum cleaner hose, which goes here. We installed the baffle box on the inside of the cabinet. So this is going to conclude part two. In part three, we have a whole bunch more upgrades to share, some more information, and we're going to discuss a little more in detail the mechanics of the cabin, negative pressure, how the uh, vacuum comes into play to remove dust and not media.
So we'll get more deep into that. So until next time, see ya.